ask the Lord, oh, my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. The Lord is great and greatly to be praised in the city of our God, in the mountain of his holiness, beautiful for every situation. This is certainly the day that the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. I pray now that you're sharing it, that you're tagging at least three people. If this gospel be heated, it is here to them that are lost. And we don't want anyone lost, so I pray now that you're sharing and that you're tagging at least three people. God is an awesome God. This is certainly the Lord's doings, and it is marvelous in our eyesight, and we give Him glory, and we give Him honor, and we give Him praise, and we praise God that we're still in the land of the living. That's the reason we're clapping. That's the reason we're blessing God is because God has blessed us with life, health, and strength, and we give Him glory, and we give Him honor, and we give Him praise. Let us pray now, gracious and eternal Father. It's in the name of Jesus that we come. We come now to say thank you for your goodness and your mercy and your loving kindness and your tender mercy. Thank you for being a faithful God. Thank you for being a just God. Thank you for being a right now God. Thank you for being of every present help God. Father, we love you and we honor you and we praise you today, God. And we thank you for your goodness toward us, God, because you've certainly been good to us. You've allowed us to see another day, God, and we want to say thank you. We want to give you glory and we want to give you honor. And you've allowed us to see another Sunday to come together, God, and we want to say thank you. In our right frame of mind, God, and we want to say thank you. I pray now, God, that you would deliver. I pray now, God, that you would set free. I pray now, God, that you would bind the adversary of Satan as we carry on for you, God. I pray now that your glory would fill this house. I pray now that you'd go into every house. I pray now that you'd go into every home. And I pray now that you would deliver. And I pray that you would set free. Father, we love you and we honor you. Father, I pray now your anointing upon this music today. I pray now your anointing upon this singing today. I pray now your burden removed moving your yoke destroying over your word today God because it's a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway Father we thank you and we praise you and we honor you now in Jesus name amen and amen out of the book of Jude the first chapter the 24th and the 21st verse and it reads like this now unto him that is able to keep us from falling and to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy to the only wise God, our Savior, be glory, majesty, dominion, and power both now and forevermore. The word of God for the people of God. At this time, the praise team is making ready to come, and I pray now that you're sharing and that you're tagging. Anybody come to bless God on this morning? Did you come to lift him up? Did you come to give him glory? Did you come to give him honor? All right, here we go. Come on, put your hands together like this. Everybody see you.
him hallelujah for being God hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus hallelujah Jesus
the feast of the Passover, when Jesus knew that his hour was come, that he should depart out of this world unto the Father, having loved his own, which were in the world, he loved them unto the end. And supper being ended, the devil, having now put into the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him. Jesus, knowing that the Father had given 
all things into his hands and that he had come from God and went to God. He riseth from supper and laid aside his garments and took a towel and girded himself. After that, he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel wherewith he was girded. Then cometh he to Simon Peter, and Peter said unto him, Lord, doest thou wash my feet? For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And we had, when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. And they ate the bread. After that same manner, also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as oft as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. And they drank the blood. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Father, the Prince of Peace, or oh, your joy, you are a deliverer, you are our Savior, Jesus is your name, Jesus, 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 we love you, Jesus, we exalt you, Jesus, we magnify you, Jesus, we lift you up, Jesus is your name, thank you for the blood. We give you glory for the blood. We give you honor for the blood. Thank you. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're awesome. You're wonderful. You're wonderful. You're powerful. You're great. You are the great I am. You are the great I am. You are. You're the great I am. And we give you glory. We bow in your presence telling you are awesome. How wonderful. You are God because you are everything to us. You're everything. You're everything. You're everything to us. You're the reason we're able to lift our hands. You're the reason we're able to turn. You're the reason we're able to lift our heads. You're the reason we're able to open our eyes. And we give you glory. 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 All glory belong to you. All honor belong to you. All praise belong to you. For you alone are worthy. All in this house, why don't you open your mouth? And why don't you give him your worship? You give him your personal worship. I can't worship it for you and you can't worship it for me. You must worship him. But the Bible said they didn't worship him. Must worship him in spirit and in truth. And God is a spirit. And we give him glory. We give him honor. We give him praise. Incredible God you are. Mighty God you are. Powerful God you are. Consuming fire you are. The great I am. You are Abraham. You're the God of Abraham. You're the God of Isaac. You're the God of Jacob. You're our God and we love you. Oh, 
we praise you today. Ah, oh, we lift you up today. We glorify you today. We magnify you for this opportunity. We give you praise. 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 Nobody like you. Nobody compares to you. You are the almighty God. You are El Shaddai. You are Jehovah Jireh. You are Jehovah Shalom. You are our God. And we give you glory. You give you glory. We give you glory. We will give you glory. We will give you glory. We will give you honor. We will give you praise. Wonderful God you are. Wonderful God you are. Wonderful. 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 Wonderful you are. And we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. Come on all in this house. Come on put your hands together. If you're glad to be in the house of the Lord, if you're glad to be among those that are justified by faith, you ought to put your hands together and you ought to give God a praise. He's a mighty God. Let me tell you how God is a great God and he's greatly to be praised. There's nobody like our God. There never will, there never shall be. He is the strength of our life. He's the source of our strength. He is our shield and our buckler. He's the horn of our salvation. And we give him glory. And we give him honor. And we give him praise. Come on, everybody. Clap your hands. And let's give God a praise for his goodness and his mercy. And his loving kindness and his tender mercy. Oh, I pray now that you're sharing and that you're tagging at least three people. God is an awesome God. Oh, he's a great God and we give him glory and we give him honor and we give him praise for his loving kindness, for his tender mercy. Oh, I'm telling you, God is an awesome God. How many folk know God's an awesome God? How many folk know God's an awesome God? How many folk know God's an awesome God? He's an awesome God and we give him glory and we give him honor and we give him praise because I took communion. Because you took a minute. Ah, by the stripes of Jesus, I'm healed. You have to know it today. You're healed by the stripes of Jesus. You're healed. You're healed by the stripes of Jesus. Because you take communion, you commune with God. And because what he heals, you become that. And he's an awesome God. And I praise him for my healing. I praise him for my deliverance. I praise him for my salvation. Ain't God good? I know that's bad English, but ain't the Lord good? Ain't the Lord good? Ain't the Lord good? I want you for a moment, if you will, just tell your neighbor on your right and your left, I thank God for my life, my health, and my strength. Thank God for my life, my health, and my strength. God has been good to me. Oh, he's been good to me. 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 And I give him glory. And I give him honor and I give him praise. I want to tell all of y'all I don't stand here because I'm perfect. You don't stand where you stand at today because you're perfect. You stand there because of the grace and the mercy of God. You are what you are today because of the grace and the mercy of God. How many folk thank God for the grace and the mercy of God? I said, how many folk thank God for the grace and the mercy of God? Oh, it was His grace. It was His grace. It was His grace. Ah, oh, it was His grace. I didn't deserve it, y'all. I didn't deserve it. But I thank God for His grace. And I praise God for his mercy. And I thank God for his loving kindness. And y'all, I'm telling you, you are blessed and better than blessed. To be able to inhale and exhale on your own. I hope y'all get this. To be able to sit in that pew today. To be able to stand up today. And be able to inhale and exhale. You all got to praise. You all got to thank you. You all got to hallelujah. Oh, y'all. If somebody from the grave could talk today. I guarantee you they'll say, I'm ble y'all blessed and better than blessed. But God has been good to us. God has been good. I want you to tell about three people, God's 
been good to me. God's been good to me. been good to me and he's bought me from a mighty long ways I haven't always had what I got now but God's been good to me
cry out. Ain't no rocks crying out for me. Y'all, folks leave in this world. And they ain't even saying goodbye. They're just and they're gone. And every time you able to get up in the morning, and every time you able to go to work and come back home, and you able to get back to the house of the Lord. You ought to give God what he deserves. You ought to thank him because nobody knows the stuff you've been through. discourage you and there's somebody that feel like the weight of the world is on your shoulder I want you to know the Lord is coming quickly he gonna fix it real quick tell your neighbor he gonna fix it real quick that's what the Lord said to me that just that quickly I'm gonna do it real quick I'm gonna do it real fast you think it, you think the process gonna take a while but your process not Take long, like everybody else is dead. Oh, yeah. I'm gonna be good. I'm gonna be good. Thank you. I pray you're sharing. I pray you're tagging at least three people. God is an awesome God. Just tell your neighbor real quick. I don't know who that's for, but that's for somebody. Tell them one more time. They telling you two years, but God gonna do this thing real quick. somebody. God will do it real quick. They telling you it's going we got to go through all these steps, all these processes. 
all oh, this. We got, we got to do this first, and we got to do that. But the Lord said to me today, tell somebody quickly, I'm going to do it real quick. He going to do it real fast. Oh, you know it. It's going to already be done. Get out. Cause it's about telling y'all in here need God to do something real quick. And I'm with somebody that's online. I wanna tell you he gonna do it real quick. He gonna show himself, and you gonna know it's God, and your enemy gonna know it's God. Somebody just tell the Lord, thank you. Oh, yeah. See, the Lord doesn't have to have anybody's permission to do what he want to do because he's the creator of heaven and earth. And he can create a miracle at any time. He can, dec did y'all hear me? He can decree a miracle at any time. And he don't need nobody's permission. Huh, do y'all hear me? He don't need nobody's perfectionness to do it. God will sometimes rain on the unjust just to show the just he's God. But God get ready to do something for me real quick. study and on Wednesday night we have a Zoom a Wednesday night Bible study. We want to encourage you to share. We want to encourage you to watch. We want to encourage you to be a part of it. This gospel be hid. It is hid to them that are lost. And I want to encourage you to share and I want to encourage you to come on because we ever needed the word of God, we need it now. We need the word of God. We need God to show up in a mighty way. Tell your neighbor quick. Oh, God is great. Thank you. At this time, let us stand. We'll do our favor confession. At this time, let us stand. In the name of Jesus, I am the righteousness of God. Therefore, I am entitled to covenant kindness and covenant favor. The favor of God is among the righteous. The favor of God surrounds the righteous. Therefore, it surrounds me. And everywhere I go and in everything I do, I expect the favor of God to be in full manifestation in my life. Never again will I be without the favor of God. It rests richly upon me. It profusely abounds in me. I am a part of the generation that is experiencing God's favor immeasurably, limitlessly, and surpassingly.
Therefore, favor produces supernatural increase, promotion, restoration, honor, increased access, greater victories, recognitions, prominence, preferential treatments, petitions granted, policies and rules changed, and battles won in which I do not have to fight. The favor of God is on me and goes before. Therefore, my life will never be the same. This is the year of God's favor in my life. That is the favor of God in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Just tell your neighbor, neighbor, I have favor on my life. That's what I have. I have favor on my life. This is the year God's going to break some rules. This is the year he's going to break some policies. And I thank God because the favor of God is on my life. How many folk know that and don't have a doubt in your mind? I, I know the favor of God is on my life. And I thank God because he's an awesome God. I certainly want to take this opportunity to say thank you to so many of you that shared with us on Wednesday night on us praying for our, our school system, praying for the safety of our school systems. And I want to thank you so much. And then Wednesday, we looked on the news and then had an accident in Winston-Salem and where one a student was killed. And so it's so important that we pray, children. It ever was a time for us to pray. Now is the time to pray. And I pray that you will continue to pray for the sick and the bereaved families all over the land and country because God is an awesome God. And what's impossible with man is possible with God. And for we know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and to them that are called according to his purpose. And we certainly thank God for the great things that the Lord is doing. It's giving time in the temple and the Lord loves a cheerful giver. And when you give, it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together and running over. Shall men give unto your bosom because we give unto the Lord. 10% of our increase belong to the Lord. And when you give that to God, God will honor you. God will bless you. I promise you God will open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you won't have room enough to receive it. The Bible said, when you give, it shall be given unto you good measures, pressed down, shaken together, and running over shall men give unto your bosom. And we want to thank God for those of you. I do want to take this opportunity to say thank you to so many of you that gave on the sacrificial offering on last Sunday. I want to say thank you from the bottom of our heart for giving unto the kingdom of God. This time we're going to stand as we come to give unto the Lord as you give online. God bless you. The praise team at this time.
shout something. Tell the whole church something. And some stuff was meant to kill you. But grace and mercy held you together. If you got a nerve to set up in church, and not at least throw your hands up and say, Lord, I thank you, I'm late. you made it through. It was a horrible experience. It was one you didn't want to wish on your worst enemy. But tell your neighbor I made it.
God bless the hell.
tell your neighbor, neighbor, some glory gonna come out of this trial. Oh, yeah. God is awesome. Thank you. I pray you're sharing it, that you're tagging at least three people. Our Father, now God, it's in the name of Jesus that would come. We'll come now. God, just say thank you for thy word. is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Pray now that you would hide us behind the cross. Pray that you bless every giver. Pray that you bless them a thousandfold. Father, we thank you now for your word that is about to come. We pray now, God, that you would speak. Your servant hear at your voice. Have your way. We'll give you glory and honor and praise for it. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Any of y'all ever took a look back and said, Lord, I want to thank you for where you brought me from. St. Mark, third chapter, St. Mark, the third chapter, somebody's still pulling on me. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, you know how it feels to survive. chapter the first through the fifth verse can we stand with the reading of the word brother Bobby you ready and he entered again and he entered again into the synagogue into the synagogue and there was a man there and there was a man there which had a withered hand which had a withered hand and they watched him and they watched him whether he would heal him whether he would heal him on the Sabbath day on the Sabbath day that they might accuse him that they might accuse him and he saith unto the man and he said unto the man which had entered with the withered hand which had had the withered hand stand forth stand forth and he saith unto them and he said unto them is it lawful is it lawful to do good to do good on the Sabbath day on the Sabbath day or to do evil or to do evil to save life or to save life or to kill or to kill but they held their peace but they held their peace and when he had looked around when they looked around about on them uh, on them with anger with anger being grieved being grieved for the hardness of their heart with the hardness of the heart he saith unto the man he said unto the man stretch forth thine hand stretch forth thine hand and he stretched it out and he stretched it out and his hand and his hand was restored whole his hand was restored whole as the other as the other i want to speak from the subject today tell your neighbor hold your peace at the right time you may be seated, tell your other neighbor on the other side of you, hold your peace at the right time. Now many of us, we speak up at the wrong time. Y'all know I'm in that mode now, y'all know that. Y'all From last Sunday, I'm in that mode. Uh, we, we speak up at the wrong time. And sometimes we have a tendency as people of God and people of the world to, to come to a conclusion about some matters before we've heard the whole story. Y'all hear me? We have a tendency sometimes to say something about something that we don't know the whole story to. Am I telling the truth? I got a quiet church today. I must be stepping on some folks' toes already. And uh, peace is quietness, is stillness. Peace is God. And believers are to be peacemakers, not peace breakers. Did y'all hear me? Uh, and, and it doesn't take a whole lot of learning to understand what peace is. Did y'all hear me? It don't take a whole lot of learning to find out what peace is. And when people got peace with themselves and got peace with God, you ought to leave things alone. Y'all hear me? Uh, uh, it, it is so, we live in a world now that if you're not careful, nothing you do can satisfy some folk. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. If, if, you, if, you, if you put uh, certain shells on your post, they got something to say. 
if you don't put none on there. Well, I wonder why they ain't got none on there today. It ain't none of your business. It's their porch. They put what they want to put on there. Wonder why they put that dough like they did. Put, put, put that reef on that dough like they did. It ain't your house. They put what they want to put on their dough. You ain't got to give your opinion about it. And the best thing we as believers can do is just say, well, that looks nice. But, you know, that's, that's Christ-like to say it just it looks nice. Or, or it's Christ-like to say, well, they must be getting ready to do something to their pooch. Then others saying, why in the world ain't got nothing on the pooch? You hear me? It must be a peacemaker, y'all. As believers and children of God. Uh, a lot of us got a Pharisee spirit in us. Y'all know I'm telling the truth, y'all. Oh, we, we got that Pharisee spirit in us. That nothing people do can satisfy us. Thank you, thank you glad, Iris. Nothing folk do can satisfy some of us. We, 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 we you know, we get, you know, we just... We just, we just can't be satisfied. But you know what I found out a long time ago? The reason why some people ain't got no peace with them. Because peace, they ain't got no peace themselves. When you ain't got no peace yourself, you don't want nobody else to have no peace. And those are the type of people sometimes you have to learn to disconnect yourself from. See them, hear them, and keep going. I said something today. See them, hear them, and keep going. Uh, 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 peace is something uh, that God gives. God gives it to believers when we are saved and when we're blood washed. And as believers, we're blood washed. And because we're blood washed, the Bible said, Blessed is the peacemaker. Okay? The Bible also tells us uh, to mind our first Thessalonians tells us to mind our own business. Tells us not to be busy about it over in other beings' matters and other people's affairs. Y'all know, y'all know what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get that. Peace, peace, peace. Hold your peace at the right time. Yeah, you know, we 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 we, we, we jump the gun. Too quick. Tell your neighbor, calm down. Y'all ain't getting it. Tell them again, calm down. God's got this. God's got this. God's got us. God's going to keep us. Don't lose your cool and you a believer. Don't lose your peace and you a believer. The devil will shake you to try to get you to act out of character so that you can lose your peace so the, world, so the people in the world can say, is there any peace anyway? Peace means the shalom of God, means nothing missing, nothing broken, wholeness, completion. Did y'all hear me? It's wholeness, it's completion. Everything is complete, y'all. As believers and children of God, we have to know how to hold our peace at the right time. There come times in our life when we do need to speak up. When folks say, I'm sick and I don't think I'm going to get no better, then you're supposed to speak up and speak and say what the word of God says. Isaiah says that he was wounded for our transgression. He was bruised for our iniquity. The testament of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes we healed. Well, I don't know how I'm going to pay this bill. I'm going through, I'm going, but the Philippians tell me, my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches in Christ Jesus. I think I'm losing my mind. You're supposed to tell him, uh, 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 he, uh, uh, he give us peace, y'all. Now I would keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee. Tell that person, maybe you need to get your mind off of that and get your mind on the word of God. Then the Lord will keep you in perfect peace, y'all. Huh. Well, how to hold your peace at the right time. Jesus is now entering 
into the synagogue. And the Bible said there was a man there with a withered hand. He got now got this group of folk there that are watching him. The Bible said they're watching every move he make. Therefore, watching you, every move you make. Now, folk that are watching to see if they can disturb your peace. Did y'all hear me? I hope y'all getting this. I hope y'all understanding this. There are people, there are things in life that try to come to disturb your peace, to try to get your eyes off of God. The Bible said they were watching him, whether he was going to heal on the Sabbath day because of a law. Uh, because tradition, uh, our tradition make the word of God of no effect, y'all. Did y'all hear me? The tradition of men make the word of God of no effect because we, we can't do it at this time. We got to do it this way. We got to do it that way. Uh, God will sometimes wants to come another way. Sometimes God wants to show himself in another form, y'all. But our tradition have caused God to not show himself. Bible said here uh, that they might accuse him looking for fault. He said unto the man with the withered hand. Now, this man has a condition, has a withered hand, and this man needs to be healed. This man knows he needs to be healed, and it's already been spread abroad, and it's already been told that, that, that Jesus is in town. This man said, well, I'm going to see Jesus. That's why I tell people you don't have to beg folk to do nothing. You don't just preach Jesus, just lift up Jesus, just let God's glory come. And folk will come because people come where the glory of God is at. The Bible said that he's there now and the man has a withered hand. The man wants to be healed. Jesus sees him. The Bible said the man stands there, stand forth. In other words, I'm going to make sure you see me, Jesus. I don't care what none of y'all say. When I'm in a condition, I don't care who see me. I want God to heal me. If I got to go dip in the Jordan River, if I got to turn around seven times, if I got to forgive somebody, I'm going to forgive them. If I got to do this, if I got I to gotta treat my neighbor right, if I got to do this and do that, I'm going to do it. If I need healing in my life, if I need deliverance in my life. So this man now has a condition. He wants to be healed. And so he's not caring about whether it's the Sabbath day or not. He said, but the Bible said that he stretched forth his hands. And he said unto, unto them, is it lawful to do good on the Sabbath day? I want to know. I know what you all say. And I, I know Jesus said, I know that y'all are standing around to find a reason to find a fault in me. Because now they're not found out fault in Jesus. Now they're trying their best to find the fault for which they can bring him before Herod. Bring him before the people at San Hedrin Court and to bring him so they can do what they need to do him. Don't you know sometimes when you're just doing good, folk will still try to find something wrong in your good. Bible said that it was the Sabbath day and mean it was the holy day. And he said, well... Will it be evil uh, on the Sabbath day to do evil or to save life or to kill it? He said, I want to know whether, will it, will it, whether it will be good to save life or to kill it, even on the Sabbath day. Let me tell you what, if I got to do something that's got to be done to save life on the Sabbath day, I'm going to do it. I don't know what the rest of you are going to do, uh, but I'm going to do it. And the Bible said here... He said, well, I, I want to tell you, those of you that are standing around to try to figure out what I'm trying to do. Or you're trying to come to your own conclusion about what I'm going to do. I have here a man that needs my help. Let me tell you what, when people need your help, you got to help them. The Bible said, how dwell up the love of God in you and you shut up your bowels of compassion on them. The fifth verse said, and when he had looked around about him, on them which were angry and greed for the hardness of their heart. Now people are standing around with greed and hardness of the heart. You'd be surprised the people that have hardness in the heart. You'd be surprised the people that have anger in the heart because you got peace. Y'all didn't catch that. And they don't have nothing. 
They don't have none. So what they're doing, they're trying to disturb your peace. They're trying to cause problems in your life because they don't because they got a lot of problems going on in their life. They want you to feel like they feel. They want you to go through like they're going through. The Bible said here that Jesus looked at them and understood that they had greed in the heart. And how uh, Jesus looked at them, but he told them, but they held their peace. And the only reason they were held, holding their peace at this particular time is because they wanted a reason to find accusations against him. But see, let me tell you what, uh, I, I don't care. The Bible tells us no weapon that's formed against us shall prosper. Even when you're trying to destroy somebody, you can't destroy them. If god got his hands on them, tell your neighbor, God got, my, got his hands on me. No matter what it looks like. The Bible said here, because of the hardness of the heart. But Jesus said unto the man, stretch forth thine hand. In other words, I'm going through, I'm going against tradition. And I'm going through, I'm going against uh, policies and rules. I'm, I'm actually going against what they've set up, but I'm going to do this. The Bible said that Jesus in the fifth verse said to the man, stretch forth thine hand. And the Bible said that the man stretched forth his hand. In other words, he obeyed what God told him to obey. Don't you know it's so important that when the Lord speaks something to you, that you do it just like the Lord said do it. The Bible said that he stretched forth, stretched out his hand. The man now standing there knows that Jesus can heal. And he stretched out his hands. And the Bible said instantly, even those that are trying to see him be destroyed, they watched Jesus heal him. The Bible said that he, his hand was restored whole as, a, as the other. In other words, the man looks at his hands and one hand is withered and then the other hand is whole. And now the Bible said now because Jesus tells him to stretch it forth. He stretched it forth and immediately a miracle happens. Don't you know there are some people they don't care what they see happen in your life. They'll still try to find a reason to disturb your peace. But the Bible said that he stretched forth his hands. And when he stretched forth his hands, his hands were restored. The sixth verse said that the Pharisees uh, were forthwith straightway took counsel with, with all of those that needed to take counsel. In other words, they got together and said, now we're going to take counsel against Jesus. In other words, now we're going to fight against Jesus. The Bible said that they, they got together and wanted to go against him. But aren't you glad today that he has enough power that Jesus said, I don't need to fight this battle because this battle is not mine. It's the Lord's. The Bible said, in fact, Jesus held his peace. The Bible said, and, and, and from Jerusalem to uh, 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 Tadon and to Sidon and a great multitude of all of them that heard it, uh, they were again now to come against him. Uh, but the Bible said that now Jesus is now uh, uh, looking at them and he's saying to himself, you all want to stop me from healing a man. Uh, but really what Jesus did, Jesus ignored them. Uh, he now he turned his face and said, to his disciples. Disciples, I want y'all to know what we need to do. We need to go ahead and go to Galilee because there are some people that are waiting on me. In fact, Jesus looked at his disciples and said, there are so many folk waiting for me that they're coming from every four corners of the earth. Jesus looks at his disciples and said, y'all go ahead and I'm going to go ahead with y'all and we're going to leave here. I know the Pharisees are trying their best to stop me, but they can't stop me. See, you can't stop something that God is working with. Tell your neighbor, God's on my side and nobody can stop me. When God's on your side, nobody can stop you. The Bible said that now they're standing there and Jesus looks at the disciples and commands them to go ahead and Jesus says to himself, I must be about my father's business. In other words, I don't have time to sit down and teach them the word. These Pharisees want to just look at it like it's the Sabbath day and that like it's only unlawful to do this. I don't have time to explain to them why I did it, but I got a reason for why I did it because I did what the will of God was 
And don't you know that some people will not understand the will of God? Some people will not even begin to comprehend what the will of God is until they get in the word of God. And Jesus now looks at his disciples and tells them, I tell you what we need to do. We need to leave here and come on and let's go to Galilee. The Bible said that not only does he leave here and go to Galilee, but the Bible said a multitude of people began to follow him. See, when you're doing the will of God, y'all, you have to just keep on going on. That's why you got to hold your peace and know when to talk at the right time. The Bible said that Jesus didn't say a word to them. He held his peace. And in the midst of him held, holding his peace, they began to set counsel against him. But Jesus understood within himself and he knew within himself, I've not done anything wrong. And when you know within yourself you've done nothing wrong, you have to just take it as a stepping stone and keep on moving. Tell your neighbor, neighbor, don't let nobody disturb your peace because God gave you his peace. The Bible, in fact, said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you. Not as the world give out, but I give it unto you. Second Thessalonians 3 and 16 said, now the Lord of peace himself give you peace always by all means and the Lord be with you all. I said, and the Lord be with you all. The Bible said in St. John 16 and 33 and these things have I spoken unto you that in me ye might have peace but in the world ye shall have tribulation but be of good cheer for I have already I've already overcome the world tell your neighbor hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battle because the Lord knows how to fight your battles Philippians 4 and 6 said be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving let your request be known made known unto God and I've come today to tell you that when God gives you his peace you don't have to stand around and explain things to people the Bible tells us in 1 Peter 5 and 7 casting all your cares upon him for he care for me and when I know the Lord care for me I'm not going to worry about what you think I should have or what peace you think I ought to obtain. The Bible said in St. Matthew's 5 and 9 and blessed are the peacemakers for they shall be called the children of God. Romans 12 and 18 said and if it be possible as much as lies within you live peacefully with all men. St. Matthew's 10 said and think not that I've come to send peace on the earth but I came not to send peace but a sword in other words Jesus here was saying when he talked about this peace here he was letting us know that the time would come that if we didn't have God in our lives he's coming with a sword in other words he's coming back with revenge but we as people of God he's given us his peace first Peter 3 and 11 said and let him shoe evil let him assure leave and do good and let him seek peace and ensure it. In other words, if we as the people of God say we have peace, we ought to be striving after peace. We ought to be striving to do things that bring peace. The Bible said here that Jesus now has left them and because he left them, he understands that he's about a mission. He's about an assignment and and because he's about an assignment, he said, I ain't going to let nobody disturb my peace. And I ain't going to let nobody disturb my dis assignment. I want to tell somebody, you're on an assignment. You're on a work. You're about your father's business. Nehemiah said it like this. We're up on the wall and we're about a great work. Why should I come down to it? I shouldn't come down 
people that don't want to see no peace. I should come down to people that don't want to unify themselves because peace is unity. Peace is oneness. Peace is wholeness. Peace is completion. And Jesus said to them, I'm telling you what I'm going to do. I'm about my father's business. And yet I have. Yes, I went against the traditions to the tradition of me. But I know what I'm doing. I'm doing the will of God. And because I'm doing that, the Bible said that when he got to the next city, the Bible said there were a multitude of people waiting on him. They were waiting to see the signs and the wonders that Jesus was going to perform. Tell your neighbor if you hold your peace, God gonna work some signs and God gonna work some wonders. But you gotta hold your peace. You're up under pressure now, and the devil wants you to lose your peace. The devil wants you to act out of character. But tell your neighbor, hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. There are some situations you're not gonna be able to fix. There are some situations you're not gonna be able to tell a story on. There are some situations you're not gonna have time to explain. But some stories you gotta just hold your peace and let the Lord fight your battles. Because if you hold your peace, let me tell you the Lord, he'll fight your battle for you. Come today to tell somebody when you hold your peace, God will fight for you, and you won't have to say nothing. All you have to do is lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you. You did it again. You did it again. You did it again. Tell your neighbor he's gone. He's gonna do it again. He's gonna do it again. But I'm gonna hold my peace. You got But the Bible told him, Jesus told him, said, hold your peace. Because all I want y'all to do is to stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. I want to tell somebody, if you hold your peace, you're going to see God work. If you hold your peace, you're going to see God show himself strong and mighty. Yes, on that job. They're disturbing your peace. Yes, in your family, they're disturbing your peace. Yes, with your family member, they're disturbing your peace. Yes, in your body, it's trying to disturb your peace. In your mind, it's trying to disturb your peace. But tell your neighbor, just stand still and give God a praise. I said, just stand still and give God a praise. Because the Bible tells us in everything to give thanks. Thank God for your enemy. Thank God for the person that's talking about you. Thank God for the trial that you're going through. Because you know that all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord. Jesus said, if thou unto the voice of the Lord, thou God. He said, I'll bless you in the city, and I'll bless you in the field. I'll bless your going out. I'll bless your coming in. I'll bless your basket, and I'll bless your store. Tell your neighbor, God, going to give me peace in the midst of this. Oh, after this, after this, there will be joy, there will be victory after this, after all the pain, after all the suffering, after all the crying, after all the mistalk, after all the lies, there will, there's gonna be joy after this, after that, he has suffered a while, I'll make you perfect, I'll strengthen you, I'll settle you, tell your neighbor, hold on and hold your peace, hold on and hold your peace, hold on and hold your peace, hold on and hold on and hold on and hold on and hold your peace, for you will not need to fight in this battle, because 
this matter is not yours. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. It's the Lord. But you got to give it. You got to give it to the Lord. And when you give it to the Lord, he'll take it. He'll fight for you. Tell your neighbor, just hold. Just hold. Just hold your peace. I don't know who you are. You're trying to fight it. You're trying to do it. Step back. The song said step back and let God do it. Let God do it. Step back and let God do it. He knows all about it. He knows all about it. He knows all about it. He said he know you're down setting. He knows you're rising. He knows the number half that upon your head. But tell your neighbor, hold, hold your peace, hold your peace. You come out better when you hold your peace. You come out better when you stand still. You come out better when you don't say nothing and let God fight your battle for you. Tell your neighbor, hold your peace. Your peace. I don't know who you are. I don't know who you are in this room. Or I don't know who you are online. But you're trying to fight. And you can't fight it. You can't fight it. You can't fix it. It's going to take God to fix it. Tell your neighbor, hold your peace. Find another neighbor and talk to them and tell them, hold your peace. Tell them, hold your peace. God gonna fix this battle. God gonna fight this battle. God gonna fight this battle. God gonna fight this battle. Somebody been saying, but Pastor, you don't know what I've been through. You don't know. The story been told wrong. Hold your peace. Pastor, but you don't understand. It's my reputation. Hold your peace. But Pastor, you don't understand. It hurts. Tell your neighbor, hold your peace. But Pastor, you don't understand. Everybody gonna look at me different. Hold your peace. Some lies you can't straighten out. Some lies you gotta live out. But tell your neighbor, hold your peace. I want you to be honest with yourself. Be honest with God today. Have there been times when you lost your peace? Oh, y'all ain't gonna say nothing. I said, have there been times, and the rest of y'all ain't throwing your hand up, you're lying. Did y'all hear me? There have been times when we lost our peace. There have been times when we jumped the gun. There have been times when we spoke up when we should have just been quiet. But tell your neighbor if you hold your peace. Ah, oh, that's a big deliverance coming after this. That's a miracle coming after this. If you just hold your peace. Oh, a turnaround is coming out of this. If you just hold your peace. Let them say what they want to say. I'm going. Let's tell your neighbor, hold your peace. I don't know who I'm talking to. But I'm talking to somebody. I'm talking to more than one person today. Just don't say nothing. Folk ask you, tell them I don't got nothing to say. Folk ask your opinion, tell them I don't got nothing to say. I'm going to hold my peace. I ain't responding to nothing. Even if it look like I'm, look like I'm in the wrong, I ain't saying nothing. I'm going to let the Lord fight this battle. 
Tell your neighbor, hold your peace. I want to tell somebody that's fighting a battle, if you just hold your peace. If you only knew what was good to come out of you holding your peace. Thank you, God. Huh, greatness coming out of that. You can just hold your peace. I right, it's going to show you a true character if you just hold your peace. Some folks want to mess up your character. Y'all hear me? But hold your peace. Tell your neighbor, hold your peace. And the Lord going to fight your battle. I don't know what you're up against. But today I want to tell you that the Lord said, my peace I leave with you. My peace I give unto you, not as the world give I, give I unto you. I want to tell this congregation today, we know we got a lot of stuff going on in those that are watching us online. Got a lot of going on in this world. But let me tell you what, the shalom of God is with us. The nothing missing, the nothing broken, the wholeness, the completion. Folk are traveling, folk are going everywhere they want to go. Y'all know I'm telling the truth. I done been somewhere. Oh, y'all, y'all, okay, y'all thought I yeah. But let me tell you what, the peace of God is with us. I'm covered by the blood. Tell your neighbor, I'm blood covered. And because he left his peace with us, the Bible said that the nations and the people would be all in a rage. God will allow you to be in a peace. God's got me in a secret place. He's got you in a secret place. Don't move out of the secret place. When you don't know what else to do, just stand still. Stand still until his will is clear. Perhaps there's one today that don't know the Lord. You're not saved and you want to accept Jesus as your personal savior. I want you to get up and I want you to come now if you're here today. You don't know the Lord. If you want to accept him as your personal savior. I want you to get up now and come now. The doors of the church are open for you to come if you don't know the Lord. If you haven't made peace with God, I want you to come. If you're torn, saying to myself, I don't know what to do. If you can't sleep at night, I told them yesterday at the funeral that God just wants you to come. Huh? I said, I'd ask God, God, what is the message? In all of this, in all of these three deaths, and I never got a response from God until Friday, and he said all out Friday or Saturday morning, he said all I want him to do is come. Come with all your faults. Come with all your issues. Come with all of your addictions. Just come to me. Take my yoke upon you and learn of me, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord, you ought to get up and come to Jesus. You don't have no peace. You need to come to Jesus. I surrender all. All to Jesus. I surrender. I surrender all. Let me tell you what. He'll make you brand new. He'll make you over. He'll make you over. The Lord will make you over. If you're here today, you don't know the Lord. I want you to get up and come now. Perhaps there's one that want to join the church. If you're here today and you want to become a part of this church, I want you to get up and come now if you're here today. Tell your neighbor he gonna make me over. Ah, he gonna make me over. He's gonna make me over. I wanna speak it over your life today. The peace of God over your life, over your family's life, over the life of your seed and your seed seed. If you're here today, you don't have the peace of God, I want you to come. Perhaps there's one that desires special prayer, I want you to come. You're here today and you say, Pastor, I just want you to pray with us. Pray with us. We believe God. Even in the midst of everything that's going on, I believe God. God is an awesome God. He's an incredible God. He's a miracle working God. There ain't nothing God can't do. God specializes in things that seem to be so impossible. He can do what no other power, what no other Holy Ghost power can do. If you're here today and you don't know the Lord and you want to come, you want your sign special breath. I want you to come here. I want you to come. I've had 
some problems, some great and some small. But you being in God, delivered me from them all. I still can't believe. Jesus, that we could come and ask you. And God, you said you would hear us when we call. And so God, we thank you that you hear us when we pray. And Father, we thank you for what you're doing right now for the people of God. God, we thank you for your blood covering over your people. Father, we thank you for healing that rests upon your people. Father, we thank you for deliverance that rests upon your people. Father, we thank you for being God. Thank you for being on the throne. Thank you for being the deliverer you are. Thank you for being the strong tower you are. Thank you for being the shield and the buckler you are, God. You're an awesome God. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we give you praise. I thank you now for your people, God, that have come, God. You know every situation. You know every problem, God, and God, you're able to fix it. And God, I trust you today, God, that you'll fix it. I trust you today, God, that you'll bring them out. I trust you, God, that you will deliver. Set free right now, God. Thank you now, God, for what you're doing. Thank you for what you're doing. God, we give you glory. God, we give you honor. God, we give you praise now for what you're doing. Thank you for setting the captive free. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you for setting free, God. Thank you for changing the mind. Thank you for changing the heart. Thank you for deliverance today, God. We give you glory. We give you honor. Show yourself, God, and we'll give you praise. Father, thank you now for the faith that they had for just walking out. You told us in your word that thou have the faith the size of a grain of mustard seed. Thou can say to the mountain, mountain, be thy removed. Be thy cast in the sea. And not doubt in his heart, but believe that those things which he said shall come to pass and have them. So, Father, we thank you now that they have it. Thank you now for your peace. Thank you now for your joy. Thank you for the plan of salvation now. Thank you for doing it for us. God, we give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise for it. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
people around you, get ready for something incredible. Don't tell the folk around you, get ready for something incredible. Oh, you ain't seen nothing yet. Get ready for something incredible. You get ready for something incredible. You get ready for something incredible. We ready to go, we ready to go, but you get ready for something incredible. Oh, he gonna be all in this. You get ready for something incredible. You get ready for something incredible. God's gonna do an incredible God can do incredible things. What kind of God would do this for me? He's an incredible God, and he can do incredible. Tell your neighbor, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready, get ready. Get ready. Ah, yeah. ah, if you think I'm something that, if you think I got something that, if you think I'm, ah, you gotta get ready, because I'm serving an incredible God who's doing some incredible things. And I give him glory and honor. Yeah, point him in the face and tell him, incredible God. Getting ready to do some incredible things. Come on, y'all. We gotta go. We gotta go. I feel it. I feel it. Something incredible getting ready to happen. It's, in other words, something out of the norm, y'all. Something that people said would never happen. Some things getting ready to happen in my life. See the son of your family, tell your family, say, get ready. God's gonna do something incredible for us.